Well, um, I just started the Facebook Live. Um, I don't know if some of you might have already joined some of my prior, um, prior. Um, this is, I think, the fifth office hour that I'm having on this topic. So it's a very popular topic in terms of how to enable um, restaurants to kind of expand out into the streets. Um, so uh, maybe before I begin, I'll quickly introduce myself. So Greg Tanaka, I'm on the Palo Alto City Council, and we're talking here about uh, potentially, uh, you know, giving more outdoor space for restaurants to um, to uh, offer outdoor dining. And um, what I'd like to do is just give everyone a chance to quickly introduce themselves, and then maybe give a um, give me. Uh, uh, I'll just give a few words on your perspective on this topic. So what I'll do is I'll just call people as as I see them on my Zoom. So Nicole followed by Glenn. So Nicole, do you want to start off first? Just a brief introduction to yourself plus your perspective on this topic. Sure. Um, hi, my name is Nicole Robbins and I live in Midtown Palo Alto with my family. I've got two young children and I, I think that this is a fantastic idea, both for University and California Avenue. Uh, personally, I think that this would be great even pre-COVID and post-COVID and, and beyond, but especially, especially now, it seems honestly kind of like a no-brainer. I realize it forces everyone to redirect traffic and I realize there are some challenges, but the benefits way outweigh the, uh, the challenges, in, in my opinion, and I'm happy to explain why further if you want. Thank you, Nicole. Uh, Glenn, Glenn followed uh, no, by was, Helena. Uh, Glenn Siegel, I am a uh, resident of 24 years uh, in Palo Alto, and similar viewpoint to Nicole, I think um, I also use the term no brainer. I don't want to use it, but I use it as a pejorative term, but I, but I absolutely agree. I think for the restaurants, it's critical. I also think, generally, for the community, it's an important topic. Uh, um, as a lift in this, this uh, you know, dark times uh, for many reasons to give people a chance to at least be somewhat present and somewhat enjoying the community we're in. And also I think it'll be a, a big lift for the tax base as that's getting hammered right now. And we, we sort of need that. And I think you know, sort of the bigger picture as Nicole said, as, as a longer term thing, I see Palo Alto seeding a lot of commerce and seeing a lot of light and vitality to neighboring cities like Mountain View, like Redwood City, and I think um, whether short term or, or ideally longer term, it gives a uh, it'll be a longer term left or potentially longer term left for the city. Okay, great. Thank you, Glenn. Um, Helena followed by Annette. Okay. Hi, I'm Elena Barrios Vincent. I am an architect. I live in Midtown. Uh, I've been in Palo Alto about 20 years. And like the previous uh, speakers, I also think it's a no brainer to do it. Not only again, pre, pre COVID, during, during COVID and after. I was trying to think the only downside uh, that people could come up with is I was thinking maybe the um, uh, retailers that have, there are not restaurants that, um, that Maybe they could say that there's less, less park, parking right there, but at the same time, restaurants would, would the traffic that the restaurants would uh, generate would be, you know, clients for the other um, uh, places. So, uh, yeah, and I think it, it, the, the, this uh, experiment, I think it's a great opportunity to do some kind of a study uh, where we analyze the impacts uh, of, um, of, of this in terms of traffic, in terms of uh, frequency of um, yeah, you know, clients, um, in using that post COVID uh, information. So, thank you. Thank you, Helena. Annette, followed by uh, Judith. I am Annette Isaacson. I've lived in Palo Alto for 30 years in Midtown. And um, I, hi, Roy. Um, I'm, I'm in, initially got interested in this because my son owns two restaurants in San Francisco and I had said, wow, look at what Palo Alto might be doing. And he, his restaurants on Clement and Balboa and they can't do it because they don't have alleyways where there can be deliveries. So the nice thing about California Avenue and University is that they both have alleyways so that deliveries can get there. So I think it's worth an experiment. I, I think it would be really cool. In Santa Monica, they closed the boulevard 
for quite a long way in their shopping district. And they are, I think, experiencing a renaissance of, of activity. People, it became a very public space. The only thing I'm a little bit worried about is the farmer's market on, on um, Sunday, because um, if there are, if there's no way for them to put up their stands, I, I don't want to lose that. So mm. that's my worry right now. Okay, thank you, Ned. Um, Judith followed by Bill. Hi, my name is Judith Wasserman. I live in what is called Leland Manor. It sounds much fancier than it is. And uh, we've been here since 1968. And I remember when University Avenue was closed off. I don't remember what year it was, but I know that it was, um, it didn't work out very well. And I'm, I'm in favor of doing it now because the situation is very different. The retail environment is completely flipped. We hardly had any restaurants in those days. We had lots and lots of, of brick and mortar stores that sold, you know, books and clothes and dishes and all sorts of things. That's gone. And the, the, the streets are now really dependent on restaurants for their activity. And also in the previous closing, they turned Lytton and Hamilton into one-way streets in opposite directions. And I think that basically bypassed university entirely. What we need to remember is that university is an off-ramp from the freeway. So we can't um, make those side streets one way in one direction uh, because I think it just chokes off the freeway traffic. But nobody is suggesting that now. And I think that I, the other thing was that it was done as a permanent institution immediately. And I think the idea that this is temporary and not even all week, I believe the proposal is for four days out of seven. So it's gotta be reversible. So anything, I think as an experiment, it's a really terrific idea. And, um, and I think the sooner the better because um, Otherwise, I think it's going to lose its impact. I think we ought to I think the council should vote on it tomorrow and put it into effect Thursday. Okay, thank you, Judith. Uh, Bill, followed by Roy. Uh, yes, I've lived in Palo Alto for 25 years. I'm uh, in favor of an experiment, but I'd like us to think about the side effects that this experiment is likely to have and what we would do about those. Think about how we define success or failure in this experiment and think about if it succeeds, what the next steps might be. Great, thank you, Bill. Uh, Roy followed by Francis. Hi, I'm Roy Cornblue. I'm a downtown North resident for almost 30 years now and um, I wore my Silicon Valley Bicycle Coalition shirt. I'm definitely a uh, advocate of walkable and communities transportation hubs. And you betcha, I am uh, interested in a permanent, making University Avenue a permanent pedestrian mall. But but for now, you know, without doing a study, let's try and experiment because this is the time to be bold and daring. Thank you, Roy. Uh, Frank followed by uh, Todd. Hi, yeah, I'm Frank Vigiano. I actually grew up in, in Palo Alto um, and then moved back uh, later when I was like in my, I think late 30s, about 40. And so I've been here already a long time. I'm in my 60s now. Um, and uh, yeah, I've, I've been an advocate of, of, similar to what a lot of the people have been saying also to close off university. Um, I lived in Europe for a couple of years and they do that in a lot of the towns there and it it's usually becomes the prime basically real estate to own if you're a retailer. Um, so I think it, the same th thing could happen here. And uh, similar to what people said, I think this is a great chance to, to try it out basically and and see if the negatives, you know, as far as rerouting the traffic and all that, if, if they're 
um, if we're able to overcome them by by planning and and all that. Um, so yeah, I guess that's basically it. Thank you, uh, Todd. You're muted. Hey, hey, yeah, I was just walking down the middle of the road. I probably should step over. Yeah, the, hey guys, this is Todd Burke. Um, I actually live on California Avenue. Uh, I get maybe not long enough, only 13 years. Um, I was pretty actively involved in the uh, renovation project a few years ago. I don't know if you can see my camera, but I'm actually walking down yeah. California right now. Uh, if you see any car creep up behind me, just let me know. Um, I'm obviously in favor of it. Uh, the Palo Alto Central Board actually voted in favor of the project on our last board meeting on Monday. So oh, Greg great. will we'll be having a, a letter uh, over to the city. I'm speaking on behalf of myself. Um, uh, the few restaurateurs that I've spoken to are obviously in, in, in favor of it. Um, I didn't quite catch the name of the other person who suggested that we sort of figure out what success criteria is and we measure accordingly, but I think that's a, that's a great idea. Although the one thing I would hate to see is for us to get kind of mired down in trying to figure out what success criteria is before we do anything. I think, <laughs> I think some timing would be, you know, maybe, maybe doing something now versus, versus later. But um, I, I, I love the idea of this project. If you recall, when we were renovating California Avenue years ago, um, one, I think it was Mayor Burt at the time that suggested maybe closing down part of the project to pedestrians. And that was, I can't remember when that was suggested. It didn't happen, obviously, because it's still cars, but it was a really, I, I loved the idea at the time. Uh, so it, there will be a little disruption, as you can see over my shoulder, there's obviously the, the uh, parking structure being being built and so forth. But you know what? I think I think everybody adapts. I think everybody will figure out how to make it adapt. And uh, I, I think it'll be a great project. Um, the, the folks that I've talked to with respect to university, I know this is California, but university it may be a little bit less enthusiasm there because it's obviously a major through street, but California is not. California Avenue here terminates at the train. There's It's really not a through street. So it's a great project. Okay, thank you, Todd. Yeah. Um, so, um, so let me. Um, I don't know. If, has, let me share my screen so everyone can see this. Um, is I'm sorry, Greg. Is William there? Oh yeah, William is there. He's um he's uh, with my office, so he oh, just okay. helped. Never like, mind. Okay. He sorry. just kind of helped orchestrate uh, this uh, this meeting. So um, yeah. So can everyone see my screen? Yes. Okay. Yes. So um, yes. as many of you must uh, might know. We're having a study session on this, so um, I think this is my official, my fifth official meeting or office hour on this topic. So it's a very popular topic. So let me talk a little bit about some of the motivation behind it, and maybe you probably already know. But um, in terms of the vaccine, there's going to be some uh, limits to how many people you can stuff into a building or to a restaurant, and most restaurants have single-digit type margins. And so if you cut the capacity of what they could hold in that restaurant by half or less, you can imagine that it makes it economically impossible for restaurants to survive in our city. So a lot of restaurateurs have been, um, and not just restaurateurs, but just people in the community as well, have been um, advocating for letting restaurants to kind of spill out into the street. And, um, and this would, um, this would uh, 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 basically allow them to effectively more square footed uh, because it's outdoor than they could have indoor and thus perhaps make them more economically viable. I, I read, uh, I think it was in New York Times yesterday or day before about um, how, um, how uh, uh, a lot of really famous restaurants are looking to shut down uh, because they, they don't think they can make it under the new kind of restrictions. They don't think it's possible to survive. Um, this, and this is not even factoring in the fact that we're kind of a partial restriction right now and a lot less demand. So, um, so, um, so that's kind of the motivation. Um, so we've gotten a ton of emails um, for us to explore this idea. 
Um, and so, and also there's been a lot of other cities who- What's, Greg, sorry, you mentioned a ton of emails. What's the general sentiment then? Uh, I would say the vast majority of, of folks that wrote in are really interested in us trying this out. Um, I think most people have been advocating for us to try it sooner than later, just because a lot of restaurants have already been closed down for a while. And it's not, most businesses don't have like, you know, two, three months worth of runway where they could just lose money <laughs> continuously. Um, and so, um, so there's, there's a bit of some desperation to try to make something happen quickly. Um, you know, as you guys know, the shelter in place has kind of been lifted somewhat, right? Um, and so, um, but unless, unless, unless you could have a certain capacity in the restaurant, it's really hard to stay in business unless you're willing to lose, lose money, right? So um, anyway, so that's the context for this. So the good news is that staff has finally um, heard the message, right? So I've been encouraging everyone to write in and call in on this topic. So this topic is um, the last agenda item for tomorrow's, tomorrow night's meeting. So it's probably gonna be heard kind of late. It's a study session. Um, so we can't actually vote on it. Uh, when, think, when speaking of that, sorry to interrupt you again, Greg, when would be the appropriate time for anybody interested in supporting this to provide public comments live in the meeting? What, yeah, what's... So, so here's the agenda, but you know, this agenda has to be taken with a grain of salt because yeah. we tend, on council, we talk, we tend to talk too much and, and these meetings tend to go like way long. So officially it's 845 is when we'll take public comment. But okay. my experience has been that we will probably be like much, much later than this, but be ready at 845. You can watch on um, Zoom. So you, okay. can come here on Zoom. you can watch on Zoom as to when this comes up. And um, is it but, is it too late for our, our emails to get sent in? Are they yeah. already, is the packet already done? No, the packet is done already. <laughs> but as council members, we get email even during the meetings. So even, even as we're okay. talking, before you're emailing us saying, hey, you're totally wrong about this, or you're totally right about that, or... So it's never too late until that item is fully heard, until the vote actually happens. But in this case, there is no vote. It, this is just simply um, a study study session, which I actually wish this was an action item because I do think it's good to take some swift action because I know a lot of, I, I hear from restaurant people every week, a lot of people are just going under. They're just not gonna open up again because they can't afford to. Um, and so I know that a lot of restaurants, a lot of, restaurant businesses are looking at this right now to try to figure out do they shut do they hand the keys over to the landlord or do they try to slog it through right and so speed of is, is of the essence right now um this is if this is a study session mm -hmm. um when when does it come up for a vote i mean this so, goes on and on and on you said this is the fifth town a town hall well, meeting this, 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 is the, this is the first time fifth time i've i've held a session on this yeah. Um, oh, good grief. But, but, but the good news is that with all this um, office hours I've been holding, um, and I've been encouraging everyone to, that's been on these office hours to email in and have the friends email in and call in, it's finally led to having this agenda topic, which is, while not an action item, at least it's something, right? So it's, 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 um, it's going to be on the agenda for the study session. We, could, we can't really give explicit direction, but I think the good news, okay, so let me give you some backstory. Paul Alto in general has usually a very onerous process called the Paul Alto process, which usually yeah. means we're very cautious and it takes forever to things, for things to happen, like six months or a year sometimes for things to happen. I don't think we could afford I'll be that dead in this case. by then. Yeah, I mean, a lot of restaurants are just going to shut doors by then. They're, they're going to be like totally good, like... Right. <laughs> yeah, because then you would... And so this has to be done quickly. In fact, I was hoping that we could have actually had this happening like... Now. Like so Friday. Greg, Greg, what are the Greg? What are the steps to go from a study session to an action item so we get it voted on so we can get it done? So, um, if staff wants to do something, they could do it without actually having to have council approval, right? Mm -hmm. But if they want to have cover from council, like they want to do something but not get you know a whole bunch of people mad at them, then they usually bring it to council. Um, so staff could directly do this on their own. Um, you know, I think on controversial topics. Um, generally, they like to get council's blessing because they don't they don't want to be held responsible for something. Um, so, um, so they're they could do it as fast as, as quickly as, as they want on their own. Uh, I think this one here, because um, kind of as, as Judith talked about, there's been sometimes in the past there's been pushback on on some of these ideas. 
I think right now there seems to be a lot more support for this basic concept. So I think, um, I think, uh, I don't think there's as much resistance. I think right now the big issue is there's a there's staff time limitations in terms of how to staff handle all this. So I'll, I'll click on this um, study session um, report. I'm sorry, and, can you just clarify what staff are you referring to? Um, to your Palo staff. And, and, and just a quick question with respect to study session. It's a study session means basically lengthy council discussion on the topic without necessarily a vote. Without, uh, well, not necessarily, lengthy, necessarily, but no, necessarily without a vote. Yeah, it means without a vote. Yeah. A it, means vote. it means we're okay. not allowed to it, take a vote. It, this is the staff covering its tush because they don't want to stick their um, neck out and say, okay, let's put a couple of boards across the street this week and see what happens. It's just, it's not yeah, rocket it, science. Well, they but keep in mind that, that, that on, on the one hand, I, I, I hear you that, I mean, and, and by the way, I'm obviously in favor and maybe it's super outspoken on the renovation of the neighborhood. Um, there's also going to have to be some other additional work. And I guess, Greg, that's part of what the study session is for, is to make sure that other, other considerations are made. Like, for example, it's closing down traffic is one thing, but then you've got, you know, I'm looking at 40 feet of basically asphalt. What do we do with that? I mean, how do we make that a place that's sort of in, in some kind of demand other than you know, each restaurant putting out some tables. I mean, I yeah. think there's some, like the parklets that Rue put out, I don't know if anybody's had a chance to see that in the parklet that Rob Fisher's building over at Creamery. They're doing a really great job. That's really nice. Creating place, a, a, a worthy place with, with a, a, an interesting vibe and feel, uh, uh, that's some effort. Like here I'm standing in front of Boheme and, you know, an extra several hundred square feet of asphalt it's going to be some effort for them to be able to turn that into a desirable place to hang out. So it's, it's more than just the boards, uh, uh, which we got to start there somewhere, but yeah. So hopefully that kind of stuff will be discussed in the study session. That's the easy part. Getting, getting everyone to buy into the general idea. That's the hard part. Yeah. I mean, I think as someone mentioned, this is not, it's not like it's going to be a complete closure and it's permanent. This is kind of a temporary thing. It's, it's kind of an experiment. Um, and so there's a, you could see the uh, list here. There's a list of things, logistical things that have to be figured out. So like, how do you make sure it's safe? How do we make sure that traffic is routed properly? How do we set up, you know, all the cones and, and road closures, all that kind of stuff. Okay, got um, it. Yeah, so there's all this kind of logistical stuff. So, and staff is not used to, city staff, okay, is not used to operating, you know, on a really rapid pace. You know, usually they take very, very cautious, measured steps. So, um, so, so this is at this meeting, it's going it's to be a time for them to take a temperature of what council is thinking as well as what the community is thinking. And so it's going it's to be a chance for us to talk about these logistical issues. Um, and it's something which I can tell you that a lot of other cities have have um, started to uh, look at seriously for their restaurants as well. So it's, it's not going to be something that's just unique to us. There's a lot of you guys probably reading about it in the papers. There's a lot of other cities who are planning to do something very, very similar. Yeah, so so that's 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 uh, uh, kind of where we're at on this. Nicole, did you want to say something? Yeah, I wanted to uh, clarify. I think it was Judith, maybe who mentioned that the the proposal only uh, includes four days a week. That's what I heard. It's like Thursday to Sunday. So that is interesting, perhaps for the people who like the idea of waiting in slowly, but it seems counterproductive, honestly, to, to exactly what I think Todd was getting at. If we're actually gonna create something that is going to be a successful model, then it has to be something that's a little bit more attractive in some place. It's an environment where people want to hang out. Yep. And that yeah. is not something that you can just close and reopen from day to day. Yeah. How, where are um, they going to store their tables? Yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. So that, that's that's actually a good question. Um, it's something which we we talked about actually. I think at the last office hour, um, and we asked we actually asked uh, one of the uh, restaurants yeah. actually joined the call. 
Michael, I asked him to join, but he's he's got family time today. But I, he's been texting me in the background, and I just asked him how much of a logistics challenge it would be to basically recreate a full restaurant dining room on the street every day, and that might be hard. But you know, it, it might also be worth it. It's yeah. hard um, enough to do just on you know on a opening and closing basis. It seems like if you have to yeah. shut down for traffic and make the street the street again you know that's a that's a whole different conversation yeah. they uh, for the fun did, did Michael seem to indicate that he'd be able to pull that off well Michael is a bit of a superhuman so um they they i i'm waiting for a text back on that i think well i asked um, him last time he said he said last time he, you know i think restaurant restaurants in general are very desperate because i mean they know that they will basically go bankrupt if they with the current yeah. right but yeah. let's get them up to succeed instead of just you know he, hanging by he said i, mean, yeah. I, I agree with 24 right, the less success there's going to be yeah I, and he said i, I agree with 24 7 but thursday through sunday is better than nothing but frankly i don't i you know i, I don't know how they'd be able to do it if they wanted to invest time and effort in creating a sense of place i mean it, these restaurants are not just about their food right the restaurants are about the place that, that we go to, you know, with Maiko and, and, and Franco at Italico and Tarun, it's about, you know, getting a hug. It's about getting a bit of limoncello after your dinner. It's You're not all about any hugs anymore. No, no. He, by the way, they put that in their thing. But I mean, it's about all of the sense you know, of place. A couple you know. of umbrellas. This is the summertime in Palo Alto. Right. It's got its own sense of place already. I think if you simply allow the restaurants to go out there, they will make their own decisions about how to do it. I don't think we have to legislate every step of the I, way. And I don't think that's what's going on here. I think what we're trying to do is just make sure there's a happy middle ground. And, and you know, it's it's at least discussed. They, the restaurants and the businesses did have a, a meeting on Monday. So I don't know, Greg, were you at their meeting Monday? No, I, I didn't attend it. I actually, okay. I think it's recorded though. I, I could be mistaken, but there was okay. a Zoom meeting for both um, California Avenue and, and University Avenue. Okay. Um, and there's been a, there's been a several surveys that that's been out on this topic. Wouldn't there be a large cost uh, in tearing it down? You know, like police costs and things like that with this four day yeah. a week thing. No, it's true. It's true. So um, so we haven't had a chance to talk about it as a council. Um, this would be our first chance tomorrow. Uh, I am also a little bit concerned about that because unless you just have folding chairs, right, and folding tables or something like that, I it. Um, it, which probably doesn't create the right kind of ambiance. Um, I, I, I do think that that setup time and, and, and tear down time is a lot. And storage. Um, they are not, restaurants don't have any place where they're going to store all this stuff. <laughs> if we don't allow it to be set yeah. up for the more time. reasons why it's going to be hard, I think if the more reasons we think of that, that it will be hard the less chance we're gonna have that this will happen. I think we need to be as flexible as possible, allow the restaurants to do as much of this as they want to do. I don't see the difference between sitting out on the asphalt under an umbrella or sitting out on the concrete sidewalk under an umbrella. Um, I think people wanna get out there. They wanna see each other. They wanna see their neighbors and their friends and strangers coming to town. Um, and being out in the street is is the thing to do in the middle of the summer, not wait and talk about this until it's too cold and rainy to be meaningful. Yeah, I'm, I'm with you on that. So I, I, I do hope that we can, from tomorrow's meeting, even though it's not an action item, that staff will feel enough confidence to move forward. Um, there may not be official vote, but I think staff might have enough confidence to move forward that hopefully by next weekend, right, by, you know, by Friday next week, um, you know, this could actually be enabled uh, because I, I think a lot, a, lot, a, lot of, a lot more restaurants are going to keep failing. The restaurants are, are all extremely adaptable. Um, mm -hmm. Micah was mentioning that Tarun's outdoor patio opened up and they, they were completely full uh, to the extent that they could be with the new regulations, right? So, so this, this really is a huge potential business option to make sure that we, we help revitalize some of some of these uh some of these restaurants so if they have a problem with storage i think they'll just figure it out right and 
some cases work together. Might be that maybe they have to rent a, a you know, a temporary trailer and, and put it in a parking spot somewhere in, in parking or something along those lines. I mean, there are just different ways of figuring it out. The, the parklet folks, Rob and, and the roof folks, they figured out how to make a parklet in, in about a day. So I think, I think a lot of that will get figured out. Yeah, astroturf and, and colorful <laughs> folding chairs. So yeah, just has it been, planter, has it been decided that this is just a Thursday through Sunday thing? I would so staff, the staff hasn't, you know, we haven't had, a, as a council, we haven't had a chance to talk about it so that there's been no firm decision. And staff, they could, they could, go, they could make it 24 7 too, right? Uh, but there's been no, they haven't had any council direction. Tomorrow is literally the first time. Uh, I've talked about, a lot about on council, but there's, been, but there's been no discussion. It's just been me saying, hey, maybe we should look at this type of thing versus them saying, okay, we're going to make it, it's, it's going to be only four days. If there's enough community input, that says, look, we should try this 24 seven, give it the best chance it has, then um, staff will probably hear that and say, okay, maybe we should, right? You sent me a message first, yeah? I live in Smevic, Birmingham. If you want the fucking brawl, come to that Smevic. I wonder what that is. That's a spam call or something. I know. Sorry about that. There's one other factor that, one other variable, well, there are a million variables, but I'm thinking of Santa Cruz Avenue in Menlo Park and Castro Street in downtown Mountain View that for a long time I've had significant outdoor seating with open traffic flow. And so certainly that's doable for California Avenue, less, less so for University Avenue. Um, you know, as, a, as someone who tries to drive as infrequently as possible, I would like to see full pedestrian mall, but but the option of having both at the same time, in, meaning continued traffic flow and outdoor seating is an option. Yeah, we have models that, I mean, that are very doable, both on Santa Cruz and Castro. So if, that, if it has to be a, a compromise, that seems like an easy one that could be started. Sure. Agreed. However, I was actually, my husband and I, <laughs> had a, uh, a rare date night. We rode our bikes down to Castro Street last night. And while it was wonderful to see it sort of back to life, honestly, it made us really uncomfortable because even you know every restaurant that's out there trying to do what they can, almost without exception, there is no way that they can have six feet in between tables. They're like two feet, maybe. Mm. And people are totally on top of each other and about half are wearing masks. So well, you, you like, can't if you really want to do this and create an environment where people are going to feel safe, then you have to give them room to do so. Yeah, that's a good point. I think on the one hand, giving outdoor space to the restaurants allows them a bit more flexibility. Um, on the other hand, I think, you know, each individual is going to have to make some decision as to how much of that risk they want to embrace on their own, right? So it's sort of like, you know, I, I think they're going to absolutely do their best uh, uh, with whatever they have, but outdoor seating will be, will, will be huge. W with respect to 24 seven versus Thursday through Sunday, I honestly don't know what we give up by, by having it 24 seven. I think the benefit and, and, you know, Franco and Michael just mentioned this on a text that the benefit is that they get, they get a little bit more flexibility with how they create a sense of space. I, I agree, you know, chairs and umbrellas are one thing, but that's just a, a, a one relatively minor consideration in, in regards to creating a place. But if, if they get to basically, you know, maybe buy some uh, portable trees or, or other sort of, maybe even the city does that, maybe even the city puts portable trees right down the middle of the street, for example, um, there are all kinds of different options with respect to that. And there's a bit more flexibility in 24 seven versus Thursday through Sunday. Right. There, there is, um, in our budget, we put $300,000 towards, not portable trees, but towards like trying to, trying to help with the reopening. It, um, it could be trees. I mean, it could be, it could be yeah. yeah, I don't know. It could be um, trees, it could be planters, it could be speakers that, you know, play music uh, and try to draw, you know, draw crowds at certain times. Again, 
crowds with a little C, you know, we're talking, mm -hmm. yeah. we want to bring people, but in a safe way. So maybe, we have, you know, live music at some point where people can uh, come and like walk around, that. Them, you know, like there's, there's a lot that can be done if given the opportunity. Right. So yeah, um, La Bodeguita could bring the guitarist back. That would be fantastic. <laughs> So Sorry, Greg. Uh, there, there's there's several like um, things like one is just a parklet, so you could, there's still traffic going through. There's one with so there's like there's several dimensions. So there's like 27, 24 seven versus only four days a week. There's um, having traffic still going through, like maybe one way traffic going through um, versus a complete closure, right? Um, it sounds like some people here are, are for complete closure. Is anyone here who really wish, wishes to have like traffic still going through? Maybe even just one way traffic where people do pick up? How do people feel on this? No, I think the time is to do it all the way and the rest yeah. is needed. Agreed. <laughs> well, that, that gives them the maximum amount of space, right? Exactly. By, 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 yes. by yeah. yeah. But, but, and, and Greg, I, I think it could be to get the staff before. moving, um, you know, we can take baby steps, but we're not going to get anywhere. And viewing it as a, you know, let's say a two-month test, and, and as Bill pointed out, you know, having a criteria for it, um, get it going as a two-month test. And if uh, after that test, people want traffic going through or they want to make it a, a lesser thing or, or not at all, that that's fine. But the message to the staff has got to be get it going so that you get value out of it. Because otherwise, we're going to be here. As Judith said, you know, six months from now, a year from now, five years from now, we can still get not, not get it. Yeah, and, and not many Palo Alto residents want to see their favorite restaurants close permanently. We just don't take want that. Through, take it through Labor Day as an experiment, and then reevaluate it. And if it's the Palo Alto way, it'll take you the rest of the year to reevaluate it. Maybe you can keep going. No, that's a really good idea. Commit to at least through Labor Day and, you know, a month before Labor Day, have a reassessment. No, no, wait until afterwards so that they can keep going long. Um, Helena, do you want to say something? Yes, I was just going to ask you. So it sounds like the planning department could, could um, institute this right away, but obviously they prefer having the council support. Uh, let's say, what, what's the fastest way for, for them to get the, um, the council support, given tomorrow there's a study session? What, ha what happens after that? Well, you know, um, you know, I think there's, there's, um, there, there's these practical um, logistical things, right? Here, right? Sidewalk dining, street closures. I mean, you can also imagine like restaurants are next to each other. They want as much real estate as possible, right? So there could be a little bit of a turf war. I mean, so, so there's a lot of, there's a lot of like logistic, like small logistical things that have to be figured out. Mm -hmm. So um, uh, now the good news is that this is temporary. So it's not like we have, to, we have to pour any concrete, right? It's just putting up bollards or cones or whatnot. So it's not, not terribly hard. Um, but um, it's, it's really these details right, right here that, that have to be kind of hammered out. And so it could be done as soon as, as I said, like Friday, which, which would be great, but then going into a weekend. Um, I know staff was actually thinking about it, maybe even this weekend, but there's a lot of stuff around the protests and whatnot. So they didn't, but um, uh, yeah, I, but I, I do think speed is of essence here. In order for this to have have the right kind of impact, there's also the question of the sort of public education campaign, for lack of a better word, getting the word out that this is happening. Which, of course, is far more complicated if you have to then educate people which days it's open and which days it's closed and how yeah. that all works. People don't like to think that much, honestly. Yeah. You know, yeah. if you just say that this is happening, people will get on board. And, and there's also like nuances like in University Avenue. Does it mean the cross streets should be closed too? Or should that traffic go through? Or should it, you know? So, so there's a lot of kind of, um, or you know, if you close it, maybe you give extra parking there, right? So there's a lot of like small stuff, but I mean, this is all being done temporarily. And I think it's kind of like, I'm not sure if you guys heard the concept of test and learn. It's kind of like design thinking. You kind of, you kind of like try some things out and the next day if it doesn't work so well, you try it a little bit differently. You keep on iterating, well, others, you try to make it better. That's the, the five years that we spent rebuilding California Avenue after the trees were destroyed was maybe a little bit too long. 
So, <laughs> yeah. yeah, we don't want to wait five years for this one. Greg, no. Is no. the um, alcohol consumption the number six? Is that a positive? I mean, like, is is that going to be a problem? So um, I actually, uh, so I, I had a couple um, conversations with our county supervisor about this topic um, because a lot of other cities brought the same issue. Like, well, can you serve like, can you serve alcohol outside, right? And a lot of people's license doesn't allow that. Um, so I think the county heard this loud and clear from a lot of different cities, not just ours, that this is important. So I think they are trying to put things in place so that the county is not the bottleneck. So that's the good news. I, I think the restaurants have to have that. That is the money maker for them. I mean, you, you have to be able to allow alcohol out, you know, in the restaurants. They can't make it without it. Yeah. You know, I, that's I, a I could, big draw. Like, just come sit and have a drink. <laughs> that's right. It's also the big profit for most restaurants. So yes. Yeah. I mean, it's, yeah. So that that's that's been asked, and and I, I don't so I don't think the bonnet's going to be on the. Uh, ABC alcohol beverage control. Uh, I don't think it's going to be on that. It's going to be really kind of on the city logistical side. So they do and it. Also, they do it in Castro and on Santa Cruz Avenue. They serve alcohol outside, yeah. so yeah. shouldn't be a problem. Um, yeah, I mean it's got to it's got to have alcohol. I mean it can't like it'd be kind of crazy to somehow limit alcohol. Okay. Um, Oh, uh, Helene, was there anything else that you wanted to say? No. Okay, okay, great. Oh, uh, Judith, did you want to say something? Is just no? waving goodbye. Okay, okay. Sorry. Is there anything else that we can do to support this? Yes. Call in, write in, have your friends call in, write in. You know, that's that's kind of the because it. Because it you just want to make sure that this, this, this doesn't explode. Greg, I, I emailed to cities to uh, this, uh, the city council. Should we be emailing the staff as well? Yeah, no, they can get the city you know, they get the email. As long as, as, long as you, um, as long as you uh, email council, uh, they get it too. They see the same emails. Okay. And Greg, uh, what's this, what's your sense in the rest of the council? Are they supportive? Is there anybody that's against? I, you know, we haven't had the discussion. Although I, I brought this Informally, topic up. at least. I, I brought this topic up, up quite a bit, um, but there has been too many of my colleagues who have, who said, oh yeah, that's a great idea. I mean, mainly, mainly because it wasn't agendized. So to be fair, but I, I brought it up maybe about three or four times already. So, um, but there hasn't been a lot of my, my, a lot of my colleagues haven't done this. And I don't think it's because they're against it, just mainly because I think they felt it wasn't agendized. So they didn't, you know, it, it wasn't a time to deliberate it. Great. Greg, Great. I, I, Great. just one thing I wanted to add, we're obviously gonna have to address garbage. It looks like we didn't get a too good a job today, but. Um, I really wanted to say thanks for the effort that you put in. You take extra time from life and the family on the weekends to do these calls and really appreciate it. So appreciate what you're trying to do for the community and uh, it's it's gone noticed. So thank you. Thank you, Todd. I really appreciate it. And thank you guys for uh, joining and taking time out of your Sunday to join in and have this discussion. really appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks, Greg. Okay, thanks, Greg. Okay, guys. Bye -bye. Have a good weekend. Bye-bye. You too. Bye. Bye.